You know, sometimes you log into Twitter and you see something trending and you think it's about one thing and then you find out it's a totally different animal in and of itself. So when I got onto wrestling Twitter the other day and I saw that Eddie Guerrero was trending, I was assuming it was for any number of a variety of positive good reasons. You know, talking about is he the greatest Latino superstar in WWE history? Is he an all-time great? Like, is he top 10, top 20, top 30, blah, 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 blah. You know, talking about great memories or great moments or great matches that he had. All of these valid things that Eddie, I think, has, you know, trended for before. You know, if you have, like, the WWE on Fox Twitter account says, like, name the five greatest superstars of this or that or blah, 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 blah. Like, all valid, perfectly fine, justifiable reasons for Eddie Guerrero to trend on Twitter. Um, but when I actually looked and saw why he was trending, and certainly many of you that have clicked on this video and are going to probably uh, emote a strong opinion one way or another about this, um, will do. I looked and apparently he was trending because some fan kind of randomly chose this hill to die on. Oh my goodness, I don't know why. Basically saying, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and probably doing a bad job of it, but the gist of it to me at least was that Eddie Guerrero <laughs> was more of a B-plus player and that the only reason people look at him to the level that they do is because he died. And let me first say a couple of things about that. Number one, just seems like a really odd take to want to put out there. If you were intentionally trying to troll folks, congratulations, you led to him trending for many hours on wrestling Twitter and on Twitter in general the other day. Mission accomplished. You got the attention you sought. I don't know if it's necessarily attention you wanted, but maybe it was. Um, is there something to be said that sometimes people can get propped up artificially because they've passed or they've passed tragically or they've passed early? Certainly. That happens with actors and entertainers and athletes, musicians, so on and so forth. It, it does happen. It absolutely does. Um, but it's just a really weird take to want to put out there. Like, why, why, why feel the need to go out there and say it? I don't know. But I also want to point this out too, is that it is incredibly important that we allow people to have differing opinions. And, you know, when you talk about snowflake behavior, um, wrestling, and especially wrestling social media, wrestling internet certainly is full of it. And that's not necessarily a liberal or conservative thing. Snowflake more just in terms of every time you turn around, somebody's bitching about something. And a lot of times it's the wrestlers and the people in wrestling that are biggest crybabies and snowflakes of all. And we, we all know this, I've talked about this for years. But we shouldn't always have to get our panties in such a wad bunch because somebody dares to venture out and have a different opinion from us. Like, what's wrong with that? If he just sat there and went the Randy Orton promo route of Eddie's not in heaven, Eddie's in hell, then you know what? Blast and flame away via your flaming keyboard fingers of fire on Twitter. Do what you need to do. Serve justice. Yeah, you're going to tweet about it. But because this guy or whoever it was, gal, whoever, expressed this opinion via social media, like people were rage tweeting about it and people were having to come out and say, he wasn't a B-plus player, he's the definition of A-plus player, blah, 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 blah. Like, why, why can't we just have fun debating things and why can't we just disagree on things like normal civil human beings i realize that's not the culture or nature of our current environment but i mean damn like that mob mentality concerns me a little bit is that if you don't blend in it's big problems for you well we know that i don't necessarily care about blending in and i in fact i like to be different sometimes. I don't always seek out to be it. It just is what it is. But controversial take here. That person wasn't that off. Look, I loved Eddie Guerrero as a wrestler and as a performer and as an entertainer. 
I thought he was fantastic. I thought he could do a great job as a heel. He could do a great job as a baby face. He had personality. He had charisma. He had mic skills. You know, obviously he was a great in-ring performer, like pretty close to the total package. You know, earlier on in his career, he didn't quite have that heavyweight size, but enough years of lifting weights and the gas, uh, which we all know about. So I'm not saying anything disrespectful or anything, but the reality was he got gassed up enough to the point where he was just believable enough as like a heavyweight main event type of guy. You know, and Eddie Guerrero is one of my five all-time favorite wrestlers of all time. But he certainly was not an A-plus player. He just wasn't. Like, you could sit there and say, hey, I like this person because of their talent. I like this person because they fit my style of wrestling and blah, 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 blah. But for crying out loud, at the end of the day, wrestling is a business first and foremost. And even though Eddie spent several years in WWE, the reality is it's not as long as you think. What was it, five? Maybe a little bit over five? That's it? Like when you really truly look at it, he wasn't an A plus or even an A player, especially for WWE and just wrestling in general. He wasn't. And we take this thing like, oh, he was like an A minus or B plus player as some type of major insult. No, that means of all the people that ever wrestled, you're saying this person's probably in the 10th to 12th percentile. Last time I checked, that's pretty effing good. Is it so worth getting so bent out of shape about it because somebody says that one of your all-time favorites isn't one of the true all-time greats of all time? No. Eddie Guerrero is one of my five favorite professional wrestlers ever. And I would not sit there and say he was an A-plus player. He wasn't. He wasn't an A player. I'm even borderline on saying he's A minus. Like I know a lot of you hear B plus player and you think about the promo several years back with Triple H and Stephanie talking about Daniel Bryan and so forth. But even then with Daniel Bryan, like he should be honored to be in the same league as an Eddie Guerrero in my humble opinion. What do you think about A plus players? These should be the absolute unequivocal megastars, whether that be for WWF slash WWE or just wrestling history in general. These are the biggest of the big stars. These are the ones that if times are tough, baby, you're going to sit there and find a way to pay money to buy tickets to go watch them in person. Or they are absolutely appointment television. And let's be clear. We do not have a single A-plus player in today's professional wrestling landscape. We do not. There are no megastars. Let's get that completely clear. Let's establish that. Big time major stars, megastars, the biggest of the biggest, the best of the best. Now, some of you are going to talk about the in-ring crap, and who cares? It's just one part of the larger component. End of the day, it's about drawing money. It's about name recognition. It's about star power. Like, that's what should matter the most. Eddie Guerrero is not on the same level in terms of especially WWE history of a Bruno San Martino or even a Pedro Morales, let alone an Andre the Giant or a Hulk Hogan or a Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock or Mr. McMahon. There is no way, and I mean no way, that anybody that wants to argue that an Eddie Guerrero is on the same level as those guys should be anybody that you take seriously whatsoever. Like you might throw Macho Man into that mix, but he's kind of like in between the A and A plus territory. You know, in that next tier, you might have the guys like the Triple H's and the Undertaker's and the Kurt Angles of the worlds and those types of guys. These are still legends. These are still all-time greats. Now, if you were thinking larger professional wrestling landscape, like A-plus players, you're talking about the Vern Gagnes of the world. You're talking about the Luthezes of the world, the Strangle Lewises of the world. Like, you're talking about the, the, the all-time guys, the Ric Flair's, the Dusty Rhodes types. Again, Eddie Guerrero is not one of those dudes. Now, damn it all, not everybody can be an A-plus player. Not everybody should be considered an A-plus player. And that is perfectly okay. 
Eddie Guerrero was a wonderful talent, a fantastic professional wrestler, whose presence in the business more than a decade and a half after his passing is still sorely missed. And a lot of these people, it kind of sickens me when they talk about how much they love Eddie Guerrero, but when you see them work and perform, you realize how much they're missing the freaking plot about what made Eddie Guerrero so freaking fantastic. Man, you're going to sit there and say that Eddie Guerrero's on the same level as an Undertaker or even a Triple H? Like, political feelings aside, like, come on now. Like in the landscape of WWE, Eddie Guerrero's not even on the same level of a John Cena or a Randy Orton. Now, who would I rather have as a talent is one question. But when we're talking about, like, A-plus players, there has to be a measurement of box office attraction. There has to be a measure of star power. There has to be a measurement of impact and legacy on the company, on the business. And sure, Eddie absolutely had an impact and legacy in the business. So did other B-plus players, guys like Jake the Snake Roberts and Junkyard Dog. Like, they were great talents. Arn Anderson. Like, sometimes we associate, oh, now you're calling legends B-plus guys. Well, some legends were B-plus guys, and that's okay. They were still among the best of their time, still among the best of all times. Well, we've got to be realistic here, man. So y'all can hate on me all you want. I don't give a crap. But Eddie Guerrero was not an A-plus player in WWE history or when you look at wrestling history as a whole. And there is a piece there about longevity. Like if we were going to talk about a Latino or Mexican wrestler who you would sit there and say goes more into the A-minus or the A territory, it's Rey Mysterio. It's not Eddie Guerrero. Like the box office has to matter at some point. The dollars have to make some sense to everybody, even though most everyone seems to have missed the plot when it comes to professional wrestling, what it's supposed to be about. Now, are some people sitting there and a little bit disconnected from reality about this? Perhaps. Is part of that because, you know, Eddie Guerrero compared to pretty much most 99.8% of wrestlers today looks like a vastly superior talent? Absolutely. Now, you take your... Kenny Omegas or your freaking box or your Cody's or and you're gonna be like hey, just name me any W guys but you know you take like your Keith Lee's or your Karrion Crosses or your Drew McIntyre's and it doesn't matter like Okada's like I'm sorry I'm taking Eddie Guerrero over every single fucking one of them and I will fight you on that because he could actually tell a story in the ring unlike most of those guys. And he certainly was a far better character, performer, entertainer, and talker than all those goddamn guys. Much more versatile. Like, I go on and on and on. And now you're going to sit there and start saying, well, damn, Jeff, if anything, you're making the case that he was closer to an A or A-plus player. But that's compared to now, where there aren't any A-plus players. And once again, I want to repeat, you can love a wrestler and their talents and what they do and also be connected to reality. There is not a single professional wrestler today that is an A-plus player. And you're going to say, well, what about the Tribal Chief? I did not stutter. As much as I stand for the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, let's not be too delusional here. He is not on a Hogan, Andre, Bruno, Pedro, Austin, Rock, Mr. McMahon level. Fucking give me a break. We can love and admire and respect the work, the career, the accomplishments, the legacy of an Eddie Guerrero, but not overrate him just because they tragically died when they still had a lot more to give. And it does feel like sometimes that's what a lot of people want to do. Like when people talk about greatest rappers of all time and they talk about like Biggie and Pac, yeah, they were phenomenal in their time, but shit, one died when, I mean, Pac died when he was 25 and Biggie when he was 24? Like... You have other guys, like, longevity has to be part of the game, too. Like, they may have been some of the greatest talents of all time. It might have had really hot peaks, but it burned very bright and very short. The point I'm getting at is, Eddie Guerrero was not an A-plus player. He's more of an A-minus, B-plus type of guy. That still puts him among the very best of all time in professional wrestling. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, I loved everything about him as a wrestler 
and I know that he wasn't an A-plus guy. That doesn't make you a bad Eddie Guerrero fan, okay?